What's up guys, this is Valentina with Bigger Creations and today I'm going to show you 10 things that I wish I knew about Logic years ago. Like I said, today I'm going to share with you 10 things that I wish I would have known a long time ago about Logic. So uh, I'm just going to jump right into it and hopefully you learn something from this video. If you missed my last video, I announced a big beat contest with giveaway and lots of cool prizes. If you want to know more details about that, I'll link that up here and it'll also be in the description. All right, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so you record an audio file or some vocals and this is what your waveform looks like. And it's super hard to just kind of see what it is without magnifying it a huge amount. All you have to do is hit Command Plus, and every time you hit that, it will make all your wave files bigger and bigger. This will not be actually impacting how loud your sound is. This is just a visual augmentation of what the wavelength looks like. It'll make vocal editing a lot easier. Uh, if you ever want to shrink it, same thing, just instead of Command Plus, you're going to hit Command Minus. And every time you do that, it will get smaller and smaller. Tip number two, this is something that I really didn't know for a long time. You can actually time stretch MIDI. So usually if you want to manipulate or time stretch your MIDI files, you end up having to right click and then going to bounce and bounce in place and creating an audio file of that MIDI file. But you actually don't need to do that if you're just trying to time stretch it. For other effects, you may want to still bounce it in place and use an actual wave file, but you can actually time stretch a MIDI file by just doing this. So if you hover on the edge of your MIDI file, you're going to see this icon, but if you hold Option, it will then change that to a time stretch. And so now as you look at this, it's actually spaced out the MIDI. So have you ever been arranging your music and decided to, you know, kind of look at whether you need to eliminate a whole section in a certain part of the arrangement. Well, now you can do that without actually taking those regions and moving them. You can actually test it out uh, without having to make any changes. So what you do is you just select the region that you want to skip, basically so that when you're actually playing back your song in Logic, it will skip this region if you do this. So you select the cycle range and then Command click on it. And now that you see that it's in black with these arrows, that means it's going to skip that part. So if I'm playing here, skip that part completely. And if you want to undo it, just command, click on it again, and bada bing, bada boom, you're set. Now on the topic of arranging, instead of actually skipping a part just to kind of test it out, Let's say that you actually decided, you know what, I need to insert something different in this area. You find that you have to actually select every single file and then drag it over, which can get pretty annoying, especially when you have so many tracks to handle. An easy way to do this is to just select the area where you want it to be silent, right click, and then do insert silence between locators. When you do this, it will just create a space right there where now you can insert or record other instruments, sounds, and you didn't have to worry about whether you left any straggling sounds that are now misplaced. So something that's very common is to have the same chord progression being played with various sounds, and they're all in the same stack track. In this case, I've got these two sounds here. Now let's say that I decided, you know what, I actually wanna change this chord right here, and this note needs to be up here instead of down there. Now I have to go in and actually change it on all the files. Um, on each separate track. Rather than having to do that, you can actually just eliminate the other files and put it in your summing track. And now that MIDI information is going to be fed to all of the channels in that summing track. And that way you don't have to worry about whether you know one of your chords is off in one of the sounds. So here's another thing that I wish I would have known a long time ago and it's super easy. And once you kind of figure this out, you can use it to accomplish so many things on your tracks. So uh, let's say you've got a MIDI region here. If you select your MIDI notes and then go to functions, you're going to find this tab that says MIDI transform. And you're gonna see a bunch of different things that you can do here. You can change all of your MIDI notes to have the same velocity. Uh, you can randomize the pitch randomize the velocity, you can humanize it. There's so many things you can do here, but these MIDI functions can really help you experiment with your sound and especially take things that sound just a little bit too robotic to sound a little bit more natural and flow with your song. One that I like to use that I use a lot is fixed velocity. And basically this works well for 
the times that you've actually played the MIDI notes on a keyboard um, or on a MIDI controller, and then they all end up being, you know, just because you played it as a human, they all end up being at a different velocity. And sometimes you want the consistent velocities, especially with pads and things like that. So if you select this option, you can select what velocity you want it to be. Let's say I want them all to be 100. All you do is select and operate, and bam. Now all of these notes are at 100 velocity. Literally, I wish I would have known all of these a really long time ago, but this one I couldn't figure out for the life of me until like several years into it. And it's really simple. So basically, when you're playing a MIDI file, if you actually were to select the playhead to play right in the middle of where the note was initiated, it would just sound like silence because you're not playing where the chord was triggered, which is at the very beginning of the MIDI file. So to make sure that it always plays the chords and notes that are there, even if you're not playing it at the beginning of when those notes were triggered, all you have to do is go to File, Project Settings, go to MIDI, and then hit the Chase tab and make sure that you've got notes selected. And this will make sure that it always plays all of the notes, even if you're not playing it at the beginning of when it got triggered. Okay, so here's another one. So if you activate the fade tool, which you can do by hitting T and then A, basically this allows you to add a crossfade at the end or beginning of an audio file. Let's say that I didn't want this to actually fade to zero in volume. Let's say I wanted this to uh, slow down and kind of do like a tape stop effect. If you right click on the fade that you added, you can switch it from fade to slow down. And now, when you play that file, it will actually slow it down. You can also do this at the beginning. So if you add a fade at the beginning, right click, change it to speed up, and now it will speed up. Um, if you ever wanna change it back, just go to fade in, and now it is fading it in. These options are also available if you go in here. You can change how big the fade-in is and whether you want it to be a fade-in or not. Okay, so here's the next one. When you add fades, you can actually select, let's say I wanted all of my vocals to always fade in a certain amount and fade out a certain amount, and that way I eliminate any kind of pops. So if you select all of the audio files that you want to have the fade happen to, you can select them, go to your fade tool, add a fade, you can globally edit and control how much of a fade and what kind of curve you want on all these fades. So if you go here to the inspector, you can change how much, you can change the curve, and that affects it here accordingly. So a really easy and quick way to get fades in and out of all of your audio recordings or separate sounds that you're adding. Okay, last tip for today, guys. Let's say I have this MIDI note and I want to chop it up into something like this. Now, rather than actually going in and chopping this up manually, what you can do is use your scissors tool and then hold option and click on the first cut you wanna make. It will then make cuts equal to that region where you made the cut. Quick and easy way to get those notes chopped up without having to actually chop it up manually. So that's it for today, guys. I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Let me know what else you guys want to see. If you missed it in my last video, there is a beat contest. I'm going to put all the details in the description. Make sure you jump on this before the deadline. I'll also put a link up here to the video that talks all about how to enter the beat contest and talks a little bit about the prizes involved. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos. And as always, if you ever have any questions or wanna see more content, check me out on Instagram. Keep making beats.